Okay, we have our two and another integral. We have here the integral of sine 2032x sine 8x to the 252dx. Okay, so this is actually a problem that I made up, but to be honest with you, I took the whole idea from the MIT integration B. There was a very similar problem where I think it was 99 and 100, just different values. I'll provide a link to that other video, but I just kind of like the problem so much I wanted to do another variation on it. So to get started with this, what I want to do is I want to look at sine 2032x, and I want to break that up in order to get something to work with an angle of 8x. So that's not gonna to be too difficult because what I can do is I can just rewrite sine 2032x. I can break this up into, I can break the angle up into two pieces and I can write this as sine 2024x plus 8x. And then on this piece here, what I can do is use the angle sum formula for sine so that I can rewrite this using sine of the first piece, sine 2024x, and then we'll take cosine of this cosine 8x, and then for the second part, we just reverse everything. So we're gonna have sine 8x, and then cosine is gonna be the other piece, cosine 2024x. And then I wanna just take this and put it back in the integral, but I need to distribute in this other term. So let's see what happens when I do that. Then now at this point, what I notice is this term right here, if I take a derivative of this, I'm gonna end up with something, I'm gonna end up with this term in it somehow. So that's a clue that what I wanna do is find the derivative of this. So Let's go ahead and we'll just look at the derivative of this thing. So first we'll use power rule on this. So it's gonna be 253 sine, decrease the power to 252 8x. Then we need chain rule on sine 8x. That's gonna be cosine 8x. But then we use chain rule again and we need to bring an eight out. So we multiply by eight here. But eight times 253, that's gonna be 2024. And then we'll have all this other stuff. But now what we have right here, we already have this in this other part of the expression. We have this right here. We don't have the 2024, but I can create that. What I'll do is I'll multiply in 2024 here, but I need to multiply it through the whole thing. So I'll multiply 2024 here, and I need to divide by it here, but I'm a little bit out of space. So let me squeeze that in. But now what I'm really getting at is if I just, let's just label this piece F. Well, then we have the exact derivative, the whole derivative right here, and we'll call this F prime. But just notice we have this other piece sitting out here. Well, let's do this. Well, let's do the exact same thing on this and look at what the derivative of sine 2024x is. So if I do that, and let's just call this our g, then g prime is the derivative of this. This is going to be first, we'll just take the derivative of sine 2024x and we have cosine 2024x. But then we need to bring 2024 out front. But then we notice our g prime value is right here. So what we actually have here is inside the integral, this whole thing is actually just the product rule. Okay, so we have our product rule right here and it just tells us that if we have the derivative of two functions, we take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And so we're in exactly the right formula. What we need to do here is we just need to look at what happens if this is an integral, because we do have this whole thing as an integral. So, so here on the left, if we're integrating a derivative, we just get back this stuff. So this whole thing is gonna become f of g plus c. But again, our integral is in exactly the right form. We have f prime g here, and then here we have f g prime. So our solution is gonna come from f and g, what we have over here, but we just need to remember this, we just need to remember this one over 2024. So what I can do for the solution this, I can write this all over 2024. And then we have our f, which is sine 253, 8x. And then we'll have this other part, sine 2024x. And I'll add a plus c on there and that's it. Okay, now I will admit that MIT's version was a little nicer because I think they had, like I think this was 99 and this was 101. And then the answer, they had 100. The only advantage I have is at least they got 2024 in the problem. So I can say that, but this is kind of a mess originally. Okay, so there you have it. Kind of an interesting case where we have the reverse product rule where it's kind of well disguised in the original problem. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.